All right, everybody. So today let's talk about finite versus infinite geometric series. Both of these are mentioned in other videos, but uh, whenever I talk about concepts that are similar but different, I think it's good to do some side-by-side -side examples in one video. So these have been talked about separately, but here I'll compare them together and show you a few more examples. All right. Uh, so this first problem. All right. Calculate the sum of this finite geometric series. Okay. Well, what's it, what's it mean to be finite? Well, here this would have five terms in it. All right. Uh, that's a finite number. Even if it had 100,000 terms, that's still a finite number. Okay. Uh, as opposed to if the series ran on forever. See that infinity symbol? That's an infinite series. It has more than five terms. It has more than a hundred thousand or a million terms because it never stops. That's the difference between uh, finite and infinite. All right. So, okay. So let's work through our summation notation and write it out to see what it looks like. So there's going to be five terms. So first we start with one. We let i equals one in this formula. Okay, what would that be? One minus one is zero. The power is zero to start with. What's 1.05 to the power zero? That would be one. And what's four times one? That's just four. So the very first term is four. Okay, so that's from i equals one. And then we count our way up to five adding every individual result together. That's what a series is. So then we go to two. Okay, so two minus one is one. So I get 1.05 to the first power. So I'm just gonna write four times 1.05 to the first power. All right, so that's the second term. Then we go to three and we're gonna get four times 1.05 squared. All right, then we go to four and we're going to get 4 times 1.05 to the third power. And by now you can see a pattern, right? And uh, But even if you went to the stopping point, which is 5, and you put 5 in, you get 5 minus 1 right there, the power is going to be 4. So we're going to get 4 times 1.05 to the fourth power. So there's our finite series. To calculate this, you could just add all those together, all right? Okay, now it's not hard to add all those together. You, do, you get a calculator, you 4 plus 4 times 1.05 plus, and it, so long as you know how to use your calculator, you can just let it do all the work. But I need to make sure that you understand that there's a formula for adding up the first n number of terms of a geometric series. So I've included this formula in other videos, okay, uh, but here it is, it's uh, a1, 1 minus r to the n power over 1 minus r, okay, and so those are all notations that we use for geometric series, but a1 is the first term of this series, r is the common multiplier or common ratio and if you watch the other videos on geometric series i've explained what that is all right uh r to the n power over one minus r so if you want the sum of the first n number of terms like whatever that number is then we can let you know n be put there r here and here and a1 the first term there now what are we looking for here so this is this geometric? Yes. If you take any term and multiply it by 1.05, you get the next term and the next term and the next term and the next term. That's what a geometric series is. Any, any term times r, whatever that number is, gives you the next term and the next and the next. So this is geometric. And r is 1.05. Okay, and the next problem I'll do, I'll give you a slightly different take on how to think about what R is, but hopefully we can all see that if I take any term and I multiply it by that number, 
I'll get the next term. Like, what's, say you have 4 times 1.05 squared. What if I multiply that number times 1.05? I get 4 times 1.05 to the third power, all right? Anyway, okay, so what am I doing here? I want to find the sum of the first 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms, okay? So I'll say sum of the first 5 terms. That's how I can read this formula, okay? So I need to take the first term, okay, a subscript 1. That means the first term of the series. That would be 4, the very first term. 1 minus r, okay, r is 1.05. And we want to raise that to the n power, in my case, because I'm adding the first five terms together. Uh, that's going to be 5, okay, over 1 minus 1.05. All right. Now, I'll do a little bit of simplifying here before I tell you the final result. Let's do this. What's 1 minus 1.05? That would be... Uh, negative 0.05, all right? I'll take 4 and I'll divide by that just to get some of the numbers out of the way. Um, okay, so that's going to be negative 80. So if I take this number, 1 minus 1.05, that's negative 0.05. I take 4 divided by negative 0.05, I get negative 80. And then I want to do that times this other number, 1 minus 1.05 to the fifth power. So let's do like this. Here we got my calculator. Uh, 1 minus 1.05 power 5, right? Okay, so that's this. And I want to multiply that times negative 80. Oops. And then I get 22.102525. All right. So, final answer, 22.102525, okay? If you did it the long way, whether you consider it to be the long way or not, what I mean is if you took this number plus this one, plus this one, plus this one, and just like it says there, you added them all together, then that's what the grand total is going to be, okay? All right, so anyway, that's how we do uh, a finite calculation, the sum of a finite geometric series. No matter how many terms it has, this formula applies, okay? Now, uh, this right here is only for finite geometric series. It's not going to work for any other kind of problem that we could run up against, okay? It's just for ones that are like this, where it's a geometric series and there's a finite number of terms that you're trying to add together. All right, so let's look at one to contrast with this. So I did the finite example. What about the infinite example, okay? All right, well, that would be something like this, just by comparison. Because remember I said in, in part of the video, I want to just compare problems and see how they're different. Okay, because at a glance, you know, if you didn't look very closely, this problem looks a lot like this one, okay? But uh, they're different for reasons I'm about to explain. The other problem we just did, the counting went from 1 up to 5, and this goes from 1 forever, okay? What does that look like? Let's see. We start at 1, right? Let i be 1. Okay, there's the i. Uh, 19 times 0 0.03, okay? All right, and then you add the next term. You count up from 1, you go to 2. You let i be 2, and you get 19 times 0 0.03 squared, and you just keep going. It never stops, okay? The next one would be 19 times 0 0.03 to the third power. And to signify in math that something continues forever, we put dot, dot, dot. Those are called ellipses. Okay, so yes, this pattern of adding would continue forever. So, all right, calculate the sum of that. 
Now, so you could wonder, well, if this goes forever, how could there be a final answer? Uh, that's a reasonable question, and that's something I answered in my original video on infinite geometric series, okay? But it's true, like for now, just let me say it's true. Even though this process continues forever, there is a final result to it. There is a grand total, okay? In fact, if you got your calculator and just started adding these numbers together one at a time, then, yeah, you would eventually get, uh, every time you pressed enter and added the next number, your your number on the screen, your grand total would start to level off, okay? And the more terms you add, it wouldn't change this number very much, okay? The total would level off even if this went forever. That's a simple way of saying it. Okay, so this goes on forever. Now, all right, uh, how do we calculate the sum? Let me remind you of some things. Uh, a geometric series that is infinite will have a sum only if r is between negative 1 and 1. Okay, we just talked about that r number in the last problem. I said r is the number that if you multiply any term by, you get the next term and the next term. That's one way to think about it, and you might be happy with that, but r can also be found this way if you take any term and divide by the previous term for a geometric series. That will do it, okay? So how about, let's try this out. Like maybe you can tell that if you take any term and you multiply it by 0 0.03, you'll get the next term. And then if you do that again, you'll get the term after that. So maybe you can tell that R is 0 0.03. But, but let's try, okay, so what's it say there? R will be any term, well so pick one. How about this one? How about the second term? 19 times 0 0.03 squared. And we'll divide by the term that came before it, the previous term. So that would be the first term, 19 times 0 0.03. So you can actually calculate this with a calculator. Or you can see that the 19s cancel, and with my exponents, one here and two there, these will cancel and leave me one behind, so r is going to be 0 0.03, okay? So no matter if you look at it the way I did in the first problem, or if you use this formula, we should all agree that what r is, that it's 0 0.03 this time, okay? Okay, so is 0 0.03 between negative 1 and 1? It is. So a geometric series that's infinite has a sum only if r is between negative 1 and 1. Okay, so in this case it is. The sum will be a1 over 1 minus r, which means the first term of the series, which is a1, divided by 1 minus the common ratio, which is this number. If you wanted to say it in words, you could do it that way. So here it goes. S is equal to a1. Okay, the first term. What was the first term? There it is right there. There's the very first term of the series, 19 times 0 0.03. Okay, over 1 minus r, which is 0 0.03. Okay, so when we do our math here, I'll need to figure out this number on the bottom first. What's 1 minus 0 0.03? And then I'll worry about the rest of it. Okay, so that's going to be 0 0.97. All right, and then from there, I'll divide, or I'll multiply, and then I'll divide. What's 19 times uh, 0 0.03? So that's going to be 0 0.57. Okay, so I get... 0 0.57 over 0 0.97. Okay, so that's where I stand at the moment. Um, but I noticed something about this. It says there, perhaps on the instructions, when we're doing our homework, it might say to give the answer in a certain form. It might say, give your answer rounded to so many decimal places or, or something like that, okay? 
So in this one, suppose it says give the answer as a reduced fraction. Okay, 0 0.57 over 0 0.97. Uh, that's the same thing as 57 over 97. Okay? All right. Uh, reason. Well, because this is 57 over 100. That's what 0 0.57 is. 0 0.97, that's 97 over 100. And I know we have calculators, but we can't be uh, just completely ignorant about how math is done. So, all right, I'm showing you. That's what these decimals mean, right? That's what decimals are. 57 over 100 and 97 over 100. But if you write these decimals as fractions, um, what do you do with them? How do you divide fractions? Well, you divide fractions by multiplying by the reciprocal. So 57 over 100 divided by this other fraction, 97 over 100, is 57 over 100 times 100 over 97. And the hundreds cancel, you get 57 over 97. All right, so that would be the particular form that the answer was requested to be in, okay? All right, okay, so I'm gonna give you that as my answer. Uh, if it said to give your answer as a decimal, okay, we'll do it that way. But this is what it asked for. And I wanted you to see the reasoning too. I think you should know that. I think you should know what decimals are, how they relate to fractions, uh, what you do with fractions when you have them, and so on. Now let's look at one more example that is a little bit like this one, but it's not totally the same, okay? And that would be this one here. It is, it is like this one somewhat and it's a little bit like this one too but they're all every example in this video is a little bit different okay one thing is uh math or algebra at least usually invol involves variables okay and i could use i if i wanted to and i could say let this symbol i be one and then let it be two and then let it be three and so on the i can take different values but I could use another letter of the alphabet if I want to. I could use K or X or Y or whatever it is. Uh, so, all right, this time it's K, but that's not a big deal. That shouldn't throw us off. The next thing is the counting starts at two. It says we're gonna start at two and we're gonna work our way up. So if I start at two, I get 4.5 times 6.1 squared, right? I'm gonna let K be two but then I work my way up. What's after two? That would be three. So the next term is gonna be 4.5 times 6.1 to the third power. Okay, and then we're gonna keep going from there. 4.5 times 6.1 to the fourth power and so on, right? And that goes on forever. Why do I think it goes on forever? Well, because that is an infinity. If that number at the top right there was something like 5, then I would count my way up to 5 in the formula. If it's infinity, then it's, it's never going to stop. So I put the ellipses dot, dot, dot. This continues forever. Okay. Now, what is this? Well, first of all, this is geometric. How do I know? Well, because if you take any term and you multiply by 6.1, you'll get the next term and the next term, right? Geometric series have this R number, this common ratio. And I've given you different approaches about that number. How can you find it? You can take any term and divide it by the previous term. If you want to, you can do it that way. You can, if you notice a pattern to the formula, you can see that any term times 6.1 gets you the next term and the next term. But nonetheless, that's what a geometric series is. That's what we mean by R, okay? Now, uh, what will the answer be? Will it be like the last one, where we say the sum is the first term time, or divide by one minus R? Is that going to do it? That is how we did the last example, isn't it? Okay. Uh, and, well, all right, let's look at the fine print. That is how we did the last example. Yes, that's true. But a geometric series that's infinite has a sum only if r is between negative 1 and 1. Okay, that's the only time it has a sum. So this one is not 
a case of r being between negative 1 and 1. So in this case, there is no sum. And the answer is as simple as that, okay? This kind of infinite series does not have a sum. It doesn't have a grand total. Now, uh, you can just remember that if you want to. I mean, I'll let you do what you want. I, I'd say in a lot of videos, I want to encourage you to understand as much as possible. That would be a good responsible thing for me to do, and it's actually what I want to do. Here's the difference between this one, which has a sum, and this one, which doesn't. Okay? All right. I'll try to show you in as concrete a way as I can. Let's, let's just see, 57, let me tell you what that number is in uh, maybe a more understandable form. In a decimal, that number is about 0 0.588, okay? Here's what I'm saying. If I take this number and I add that one and I add that one and I add and I keep going, Every time I add that next number and then press enter, like if I was doing this in my calculator, every time I added the next number, the grand total would be a step closer to this. Every time I add that next number onto forever, the grand total will be closer to this. That's what I mean by saying that this one has a sum. That's what it means. Okay. And you could try this out if you wanted to. You could get your calculator and start adding these numbers together. And you'll find that pretty soon, you know, you run up against that. Like you, you get so many decimal places right up against that number, like maybe 0 0.586 and keep going 0 0.586, something like that. So this is the line that you'll approach, but never cross as you keep adding together. All right. That's what it means for this one to have a sum. But this other one, if I say there isn't a sum, then if you took these numbers and added them together, that wouldn't happen. It wouldn't be true that every time you added the next number and the next number and kept going, every time you pressed enter to find your grand total, uh, there wouldn't be a number that you were getting closer to every time. Okay, The grand total on your calculator would not appear to level off. So that's the meaning, at least for an infinite series, about whether it has a sum or it doesn't. All right, but we've seen a little bit of everything. If you have a finite series, we can just add the numbers together or use this formula, okay? If it's infinite and it's geometric, it has a sum if r is between negative 1 and 1, and there's a formula, of course, to tell what the sum is. And if it's infinite and geometric and r is not in between negative 1 and 1, then there won't be a sum. And that's the three possibilities we have for a geometric series.